Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 76th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. So first up, Mac Rumors claims they've gotten their hands on a production level iPad 3 Retina display and they put it under a microscope and compared it to a iPad 2 display and shockingly you can easily tell the difference between the two displays. Now it's been reported that the iPad 3 display will have four times the pixel density of that of the iPad 2 and that's because it's twice as many pixels high and twice as many pixels wide so when you multiply that out that gives you four times the pixel density of the iPad 2. And even though the PPI or pixels per inch is slightly below that of the iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S's display, which is said to be the definition of a retina display. The definition of retina can change because you can't see as well farther away as you can close up, so not as many pixels are required for it to be a retina display. And with that said, Apple Daily actually posted pictures of what they're claiming is going to be the production iPad 3 or the next generation iPad compared to an iPad 2 and the original iPad. And the design for the rumored iPad 3 is slightly more tapered than that of the iPad 2, and it's definitely different than the original iPad. However, the difference isn't really that noticeable. You have to actually look at it and examine it and see that the edges themselves are more tapered than the iPad 2. And also when you look at it, the camera cutout is different and the actual camera itself is different because it's slightly bigger than that of the iPad 2. It's positioned in a slightly different spot and that most likely indicates that it will have an upgraded camera and an upgraded lens. Now, Apple Daily claims that it will have an eight megapixel camera, which is a huge upgrade from the iPad 2's iPod touch quality camera. However, it's definitely possible that there will be some sort of stepping stone in between that iPod touch quality camera and an eight megapixel camera. They might not make that big of a jump with just one release. So something more realistic might be around three or five megapixels. However, it would definitely be great if Apple would include an eight megapixel camera in the next generation iPad 3. Also building on that even further, numerous pictures including pictures of the display itself, the connectors on the display, and individuals actually working on the display have been leaked. And these are reported to be real and official pictures. And the reason why they're such low quality is because the individual who took the pictures had to take them in secrecy because Apple takes leaks very seriously and they do not want anything getting out. So the person on the inside who had to take these pictures had to use special equipment. And obviously when you try and conceal a camera and get it into a low profile form factor, you definitely lose quality. And that's what happened in this situation. And the pictures actually originated on a form and that form is based relatively close to where the displays are actually manufactured. So these pictures have been deemed authentic by multiple sources. And in addition to that, the individual on the inside who took these pictures claims that they've actually seen a finalized version of the next generation iPad and that the design of it looks extremely similar to that of the iPad 2. So everything we've discussed in best tech and phone rumors related to the next generation iPad is kind of starting to sync up now. So let me just give you guys a quick rundown of what's expected. Basically a design that's similar to that of the iPad 2. It could be slightly more tapered An improved camera is a must for it. A retina display. So that's a display with four times the pixel density of that used in the iPad 2 and it's also expected to have a quad core A6 processor. However, there have been some reports suggesting that it will have a slightly modified A5 processor, but it's most likely going to be a completely upgraded processor. And it's also expected to be announced within the first week of March and released one week after its announcement. Other than that, everything else is pretty much up in the air and Apple could definitely throw in surprises. But all of the recent iPad 3 rumors have been basically backing up what I just went over. And of course, make sure you stay tuned to this series and my website besttechinfo.com and I'll have full coverage on the iPad 3 from the unveiling event to the purchase of the final product and everything in between that. Now moving away from the iPad 3 we have something that's pretty unusual. Google Glasses. All right now according to the New York Times sources who just happen to be Google employees that are familiar with classified projects, Google is planning on releasing a pair of glasses later this year that will be capable of streaming data to the wearer's eyes in real time via a HUD or heads-up display. According to the sources, the glasses are expected to run around the price of a smartphone, which can range anywhere from $199 to an upwards of $600. The employees that are familiar with the project claim the glasses will have a display that sits just in front of the user's eye, which 
considering the major advancements that have been made in transparent displays lately, it seems odd that Google wouldn't just integrate the display into the lenses of the glasses themselves. But aside from that, it's been rumored that the glasses will feature a mobile version of the Android operating system, and they will be equipped with 3G or 4G capabilities to actually stream the data to the glasses in real time. And earlier this month, a proposed navigation system for the glasses was detailed. It basically stated that the glasses will have some form of a map overlay that you can navigate simply by flicking your head around. So you can move your head up, down, down, left, right, and the maps will correspond accordingly. But don't worry though, in the report it was suggested that the motions will be undetectable by outside users, so nobody else will be able to know what you're actually doing. And if that's the case, then it's obviously going to be extremely sensitive when you tilt your head in any direction, which could lead to a harder time actually navigating through the map. So we'll have to see how this pans out in the future if the product is even released. Moving on, it's been reported that a modified version of Flashback has been discovered roaming the internet in search for gullible Mac users. Now this virus could potentially be dangerous because if you accidentally install it and you accidentally give it access to your computer, then it will take advantage of a Java security exploit and it can gain access to all of your personal information, which could include things like usernames, passwords, credit card data, identities, etc. So basically this thing will take all of that information, all that sensitive information you have on your computer and you input into your computer and it will basically store it in a cloud environment so that it can be picked up later. Later. However, not to worry if you're on OS X line or you have an updated version of Java runtime on your Mac, then you will be fine. And if your version of Java isn't up to date, then you can update it by going to the software update section inside of the main Apple menu on your Mac. But even if you do come across this virus, you'd have to download it, install it, and put in your password for it to actually do any major damage. But if you use your common sense, it won't even get that far because it says it's an Apple Inc. certificate. However, OS X picks it up as coming from a non-trusted source. So that's how you know not to install it if it says it's from Apple Inc., but yet OS X is contradicting that, saying that it's not from a trusted source. So obviously do not install that. And the same goes for any type of virus that you come across on your Mac. Just don't install anything that looks suspicious in any way, shape or form, and you'll be fine. Also the PS Vita was released the other day on the 22nd of this month. And if you guys want more information on that, I will have a link to my unboxing and review videos that I did down below in the more info. So if you guys want any information on the PS Vita, you can find them. I know I cover a lot of different things in both of those videos. So if you have any questions before buying the PS Vita, make sure you guys Guys refer to those videos first. And finally, I made two videos since the last episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. The first one is on Siri and how to get it on the iPhone 4 without actually having to go through a Spire server or a Spire proxy. Basically, it bypasses that by using iPhone 4S keys. However, there's a downside to it and it actually does work on some of the other devices as well, but just not as good as with the iPhone 4. And that's why I said it only works with the iPhone 4 because I do not want you guys installing it on something like an iPod Touch and then having it force you to restore. So I just said it was for the iPhone 4 and it's not ideal for most people but if you guys want to check that video out then you can and the other video was just on OS X I went into depth on it and I covered basically everything that it has to offer all of the major features of it and I went into depth on each of them so links to both of those videos as well as everything else I talked about in today's episode will be down below in the more info and don't forget the winner of the giveaway that I'm doing in collaboration with Friday Night Cranks will be announced later tonight I'll have the winner on my website so just make sure you stay tuned for that I will keep you guys updated via Twitter and Facebook and I'll let you know there also be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and if you guys want to be updated more often just be sure to like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter and add me to one of your circles inside of Google Plus and until next time this this is ICU signing out.